Welcome everyone to Lashes Love Tech. I am your host, hip hop engineer, Kay Malcolm. We have a super special guest today. Jay Sook Evans is the Chief Information Officer, also known as CIO, of Oracle. So during Jay's 20 plus year career, she has built and led global technology teams. And she's cross industry in telecom, gaming, retail, e-commerce. Jay has done it all. She joined Oracle in April 2020, and she has sped up Oracle's cloud transformation, building out cloud regions all over the place. Jay is a mom, she's a wife, and she is a certified badass. Jay, welcome to the show. You're, uh, that's very, you're too kind. Thank you so much for the introduction. I really appreciate it. You are welcome. I'm speaking the truth. So Jay, just for grins, if you could choose any superpower in the world, what would it be and why? I, I was thinking about, you know, what, what is it that could actually be practical, but I could use is um, from a total recall perspective, if I could have really good photographic memory, I think that would be really helpful for me, Kay. <laughs> because there are I'm times I'm like, what do I do with my keys or you know, <laughs> things that I care? So it'd be just great if I, you know, could just have, have that uh, and use it, you know, as from a practicality perspective. So. Oh my gosh, I like, I, I would love that. <laughs> so Jay, you are the CIO of Oracle, first an incredible feat. Um, and I've got a stat for you. So the Wall Street Journal reported that before the pandemic, so right around 2019, 80% of CIOs were women. Part of my reason for inviting you to the show today, I want the world to see your fabulousness and I want to change this number, as I'm sure you do as well. But first, let's tell our viewers what an average day looks like for a CIO of a major cloud company. As you described, being CIO at a tech company the size of Oracle, um, quite, uh, quite an amazing opportunity where I get to actually support internal customers and external customers. So internal customers, we're going through a massive cloud transformation of our internal workloads um, and how we manage um, our own um, on-premise workloads and migrating into OCI. So kind of, if you will, Oracle at Oracle type of um, activities that are happening. And a lot of learnings are happening there, but we're going through a very aggressive um, and accelerated transformation uh, with that journey. And I also um, have to ensure that all of our employees within Oracle and all the countries where everyone's based um, and working in this very distributed fashion that we are today um, to ensure that they can work from anywhere, anytime, um, uh, securely. So that's one of the big things that um, we ensure we focus on. And then um, I also have the opportunity, as you mentioned, of building out regions, cloud regions for our customers throughout the world. Um, we are doing it for um, commercial regions, but we're also doing it for customers who want a dedicated region on their premise of what we call DRCC. So we've been focusing quite a bit there. As we've been doing that, Kay, we've been working through how can we do this um, at scale? How can we build it at scale? How can we operate it at scale? So there's a lot of different things we're also looking at in that process of what are things we need to ensure we have automation in place that we can do in a um, much more scalable and sustainable fashion. And then of course, um, spend some time on, you know, what's next? What are things that we need to consider as we continue to grow um, and get ahead of that? That's, that's a lot. You're thinking through a lot, Jay. So impressive. Okay, so um, I did a little bit of homework on you um, and was doing some research. I went out to the interwebs to see uh, uh, what you'd done. Um, and I happened upon a blog that you wrote a few months ago, and I want to read it to our viewers. This is, these are Jay's words. It's important to foster a culture of diversity and inclusion because it establishes a sense of belonging and it creates a space where employees feel comfortable to be themselves. Encouraging and embracing diversity and inclusion in the workplace leads to better decisions, discussions, and outcomes. So Jay, the thing that is so impressive of you is you've got this massive list of accomplishments. In fact, I know that we're close in age 
And when I was reading all this stuff, I have to be honest with you. I was like, I got to get my act together. Um, but then you've got an equally great track record of supporting women and people of color. And, you know, this is something that as I was looking through your career, you've done this at every single role. Um, now, I've got one of my favorite shirts on, Howard Bison's. And one of the most fun things that I did this year uh, was I taught an Oracle Cloud database course for Howard University, 70 students. And, and I promised them that when I did one of my shows, I would wear their shirt. Hey, Howard Pease. <laughs> but you took that to another level. And I found out that you are the executive sponsor of diversity and inclusion for all of Oracle Cloud. So tell me, why is belonging important? And why are you so passionate in every single one of these roles about diversity and inclusion in tech? Thanks, Kay. You know, it's funny. I was, you wore your shirt. I should have probably worn mine. So I was um, actually also executive sponsor at, um, at another company for African Business Resource Group. And we um, spent a lot of effort uh, focusing on uh, HBCUs. And we actually held a tech summit uh, where we would do activities um, half the day and then talk a bit about you know, the company, but then also really listen and understand kind of what's going on. What are the things that we need to consider um, from a hiring perspective and from a retention perspective? And um, I, see, I see this topic um, as not just something that I could do on my own by any means. And um, if anything, I've learned a lot from um, colleagues, from friends, from uh, employee resource groups. Um, and so it's something that I'm very passionate about. Yes, uh, I am uh, a female Asian person of color uh, in a uh, environment where I don't see very many people like myself in, in roles um, at this level. And so I find it an opportunity for me to help uh, where I can um, from that perspective. But then also it's really, Kate, at the end of the day, it's encouraging people from different backgrounds, different ideas to come together, in including them, um, so that they can come and provide um, the diverse thinking experiences to truly create better outcomes. And there's been tons of studies that have shown that. And that's, you know, from a technology perspective and a business, but it's also something that I, I talk to my children about who are growing kids that are in elementary school right now, but I talk to them about it just in society alone with a lot of things that have been going on uh, with Black Lives Matter, with Asian hate crimes increasing, and a lot of things that have been happening in society that it's just a topic that I'm very passionate about. And so from that perspective, what, what I'd like to just say is that I think this is something that everyone can participate in. It's not just you have to be an underrepresented minority to, to experience something that you can't bring to the table. It's also having allies and it's uh, also having, um, you know, time to understand what's going on and to spend time listening and to see what you can do to help. I, I love what you said when, when you mentioned that you don't have to be a person of color. You don't have to be an underrepresented minority and, and how important allyship um, is for, for the effort. Because I like to say that that this work that, that you and I are doing, it's human work, right? It's not DNI work per se, but it's something that will, you know, in, in tech sectors, having the tech world look like the outside world breeds innovation and innovation is how we compete. So thank you for all of the work that you're doing. So you mentioned your boys. Now, I don't know if you know, but we do have another thing in common. We're both boy moms and I saw your little peanuts and they are the cutest. So tell me, how do you balance? How will you balance it all? Career, personal life, your passions. And is there even such a thing as balance? You know, we're now, I'm talking to you in my house, um, you know, and I was telling my husband, hey, when the kids come, make sure the dog doesn't bark so that we can, you know, do this, you know, show. Um, and so it's just very, uh, present, if you will, work um, and personal, to the point where um, I was in a meeting and um, I realized, I guess I wasn't on mute, and they could hear me in the background yelling at my dog saying, don't you do that. And she was about to like eat my kids, I don't know, um, soccer cleats or something. And so I was yelling at her and the person was like, oh my gosh, she's telling me not to do this, like on, on the work call. So I was like, no, 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 I meant, I meant my dog. Sorry about that, right? So when you talk about like, how do you balance or how do you, you know, work and then your personal, 
a big part of trying to balance the fact that, you know, there is it's, there are sometimes choices that need to be made and trade-offs that need to be made when there is a meeting or an event that has to happen um, and it conflicts with an event um, for something that I need to attend for, for my children. And so I'd say, you know, it's, it's an ever evolving thing. And um, for what works for me, is it something that I do um, with my family? We make, we have these conversations and we make decisions together when it impacts, you know, a work decision that impacts, you know, family. Um, you know, I do have times when it's family time. I do, I do make sure that that's, that's an uh, important thing with my children. Um, and then I also do, you know, share with them that there are certain times where I really do need to be in this meeting. Or I really do need to be at this event. Um, and those decisions get made. So you mentioned um, these core values and culture. You've done some excellent work at Oracle in less than two years. Um, and I'm sure in looking at your pedigree, you could have gone to any company, but you selected Oracle personally. I'm glad that you did that. Um, so for those who are listening, who know nothing about Oracle's cloud, Tell us why the world needs Oracle Cloud and how do we separate ourselves from the other clouds? Sure, and I'll tell you, Kate, what really excited me about coming to Oracle has a lot to do about what's going on in Oracle Cloud and um, the amount of work and effort the team has done who originally built um, OCI and how much it's evolved in just the two years I've been here. What Oracle brings as um, a value and as a differentiator is it has supported enterprise customers for many, many years. And it's helping take those complex workloads that they that we have been supporting for many, many years that customers want to put into the cloud. And what OCI offers is the ability to migrate your workloads in any level of maturity you're in. It's a general purpose cloud that can work for the most complex workloads from an enterprise perspective. So it's really looking at what their core assets were and what really helped them become who they are as a company and the customers that they've supported and serviced over the many decades, and then how to continue to be relevant and to support them and their workloads. And then, um, of course, you know, additional customers who see that OCI is not just a cloud for legacy workloads. It's a cloud for all workloads and its general purpose so that it can also entice other new customers we may not even have today to use our cloud. So that's a big part of why I came, Kay, to help make a difference and to continue that momentum. And, and the momentum, it's 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 crazy because see what I hear is that that Oracle's cloud, because I like to talk about the so what all the time. And yeah. the so what, yeah, you were right. We um do do things that a lot of the other clouds do, but the cloud for the enterprise, our suite of applications, and being able to to have an answer for a customer's legacy workloads and for those new workloads, it, it's, it's tremendous, it's fantastic. Okay, Jay, so I've got a fun one for you. I want you to tell me if you stepped outside your door and you met 20 year old Jay, what advice would you give her? Other than party more and, you know, just kidding. Um, yeah, no, um, I, I did my share of partying back then. Uh, so, and you did some research, so you probably found some of that. So we'll, we'll leave that to a different story. Aren't you glad but... that there were no cell phones when we were young? Oh my gosh. Well, that's what I was going to say. So the thing is for me, when, when you tell me, so I just had a, um, a meeting where I welcomed recently hired um, college graduates to Oracle. And um, the question was, what advice do you have? I'm thinking, oh, gosh, when I when was I back when I just you know got out of you know undergrad or my master's program? Like, what? That's been a while. So um, I was thinking through, like, what is different? Well, a lot of it is different. Is there's so much information that you can get your fingertips now, which you didn't have when I was, and you know, we can talk about that another time. But you know, back then, just didn't have that. So. Um, but then at the same time, that amount of information that you can have at your fingertips can be overwhelming. So um, what I shared with the new um, college grads who are coming on board and one of my feedbacks to them was, by the way, don't think that, that just because you just started, you can't make an impact. You can make an impact. Um, and so you can make a difference. Don't think you have to wait till some point in time when you have enough experience or whatnot. You can make an impact. Uh, and also the big thing I said was, it's a two-way communication. So one of the big things that's really important is that you communicate. What are your aspirations? What are the things that you want to do? Have those kinds of dialogues and conversations, but it's two-way. 
And so that was one of the big feedbacks from a communication standpoint that I thought was really important. And I would tell that to myself, my 20 year old self as well, because I felt a lot of times if I did things, I believed in the meritocracy system that I do yeah. good work, I'll get rewarded for good work. And, and fortunately, I had really good sponsors and, and really good managers who saw something in me and believed in me and gave me opportunities, um, which were great. But I didn't spend enough time of myself saying, what do I want? And sharing those things with, with my, my leaders. And so, you know, it's a, it's a dialogue and it's a two-way conversation. And, um, you know, the person that's going to best speak out for yourself is yourself. Being your own advocate. Yep, that's right. Jay, this was wonderful. Thank you so much. I know that you're super duper busy and I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule and being with us today and for supporting the show. Thank you, Kay. I really, really, seriously, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for the time and you said some really kind things. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So friends, make sure that you tune in to our next exciting episode where we continue to hashtag break the bias. You know where to find me, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Instagram. So until next time, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. Be your own advocate. Jay talked to us about that today. Maintain an authentic brand that is you and you alone. Take care of yourself, everyone. This is your host, Hip Hop Engineer, signing off. Bye, Jay. Thank you.